Hey everybody, my name is Nathaniel Dodds and welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial where today we're going to learn all about face swapping and some of the cool tools and functionality that Photoshop has that are going to help you swap faces and actually get a decent result. We're going to tackle a fairly challenging face here um, and it's going to look pretty good and using the methods and techniques uh, you can get stuff that's going to look really good. The reason it's going to look pretty good and not really good is because we're just not going to take uh, the extra time that it's going to take because this is a tutorial and I'm already rambling on too much. So let's jump into Photoshop right now and check this thing out. All right, here we are in Adobe Photoshop and we are going to change this girl's face to something completely different. In fact, we're going to make her a little more surprised. So we're going to take this face and replace this face and make her go from being happy to surprised at what she's hearing. So here's how it begins. You find the face that you want to uh, use and we're going to loop a simple selection around it. I'm going to use the lasso tool. Now, it's something to note here. We're not feathering the selection. We don't want to blur the selection. We don't want to feather the selection. We want to kind of keep things uh, just sort of normal. And I'm going to come down and grab a chunk of her neck as well because her chin is, or her jawline in general, I should say, is so much different than what we've got going on in our photo. And this is where, uh, at the beginning, when I said our result is not going to be a million percent perfect, it's because we're changing the jawline so much you're going to see. It's going to require a little bit of cloning and healing and stuff like that. But we'll still get a pretty good result. I think you'll like it. All right, let's hit Command or Control J. Pop her face up onto a new layer. See what we got there? Face and the original uh, model. Now we grab our Move tool and we just drag the face copy over here into uh, the image that I want to replace. So I'll zoom in here. And what I like to do is reduce the opacity of the new face so I can really see where it's going. So I'm gonna knock this down to maybe like 40, 50%. And then I come up here and go edit, free transform. I'm gonna move this over. And what I'm basically trying to line up is the iris and pupil of this eye with the iris and pupil of this eye. Now, do just take into consideration where she's looking in this photo is very different than where she's looking in this photo. So we really just want that iris pupil combo to be about the same size. Her iris and pupil are really gonna be more toward the middle of that, that eye area. And I'm gonna move my center dot right there and I'm gonna hold down my alter option key and just size down until it looks about right. Now I can see over here, these eyes are not overlapping nearly close enough at all. So that means I need to add a little rotation here, which I can do of course. So I'll do something like that. And then I'm just gonna take a quick peek and I can see her new eyebrows are elevated quite a bit, but that happens naturally when you get surprised. So that's fine. The uh, the upper eyelid and eyelash, it's a little higher than maybe it should be. So we could hold down alter option and maybe try to make this a little bit smaller. Ah, I don't know if I wanna make it too much smaller. I almost would rather it be a little big. And then I can see here her top lip is pretty closely aligned. So you wanna just look and, and align those big features as best you're able. See the nose, look at how closely the nose is aligned with the old nose. So that's all great. We're going to commit this change. And again, if it's not 100%, you'll see this technique is pretty easy and you'll be able to go and do it a whole bunch of times uh, and just tweak and adjust in between attempts to get uh, pretty different results. Now, I should mention, I have kind of used a photo. Her skin complexion is pretty similar uh, to her skin complexion. The white balance isn't quite the same, but I still found an image that was pretty close white balance wise. None of that really matters. Um, does it help us in this case? I guess maybe, but not really because we would just go ahead and match the color. In fact, let's go ahead and match the color uh, right now. Now, I, I like to manually match the color, but that would be sort of adding a tutorial within this tutorial. So we're gonna just use Photoshop's match color feature. I am just command or control clicking on the layer thumbnail with the new face. It's gonna load it as a selection and go image adjustments. And there it was, match color right there. And here in the match color dialog box, it's, I mean, it's relatively simple, but can also be uh, infuriating if it's not working correctly. We wanna first choose our source, and this is gonna give you all of your open documents. So let's think about this for a second. We wanna match the color of the background image onto our face. So I'm gonna say, all right, my source image should be swap this face.psd, which is uh, the, the bulk of the image. And the layer that we're sampling from is not layer one, because layer one is where we are. I wanna use all those colors on the background layer and use those as uh, the reference that Photoshop's using. So now you can see what's happening. The problem is it's just very saturated. It's probably a bit bright. So I might tick the luminance down, maybe about 10. We'll see what that does. Maybe I'll take it down 20, 25-ish, something like that. And then this fade slider is uh, pretty nice down here. You can just sort of use it to blend the images together a little bit. 
Uh, so something like that, I'll add some blend, and then I'll just hit OK, and we've we've matched the color quite a bit. Command or Control D to deselect. And I can see if I shut the layer off. There it is before and after. Uh, again, like I said, I prefer doing it manually, but it requires a bunch of adjustment layers and all kinds of other stuff, and we're not really going to get into that right now. All right, now we're going to do some destructive editing. I'm going to grab my eraser tool. Oh, the eraser tool. And another important thing here with the eraser tool, we want hardness to be at 100%. We really don't want any soft edges. And I'm just going to peel away some of these darker areas, stuff that we don't need. Like here you can see this is almost overlapping her a headphone speaker. And down here it is actually overlapping her headphone speaker. So I'm going to get rid of that stuff, something like that. Down here where it's overlapping the top of her jacket or blouse or dress or whatever she's wearing here, uh, we're going to get rid of some of that. I'm going to peel this around here where it overlaps her hand. I'm not really loving the way that we have this sharp dive off of her, her uh, jawline to her neck, but that's kind of the way it was in the other image. See how you just have that sharp turn there. So not a lot we can do there. That would be something where we would build that out with uh, the clone stamp tool. And then I'm just really going to make sure that we're not overlapping her headphones and stuff like that. Of course, we want to save the glasses where they would run into the hair uh, and don't get rid of the eyebrows, stuff like that. Uh, and just go through and clean it up as much as you're able. Again, it does not at all have to be perfect, um, but the, the better you can get it, the better your final result is going to be. So I'm just going to peel away some of this stuff down here, and we'll, we'll sort out this chin situation when we, uh, when we get to it. I'm going to pull this back on this side a little bit, and maybe I'll even pull this back just so it does line up with her original chin. And we'll, oh, no, I want to undo that. That's, that's a bit much. That's a bit much. Let's pull this back again. There we go. I'm gonna, I'm, I think I'm going to live or die with that. Let's see what that does for us and how good or bad that ends up being. Because we have such dark pixels here and such light pixels on the new face, when we blend these layers together, we're going to end up getting what looks like a hazy area in here. Um, and because this is such a solid color, we can honestly go back in almost and follow the old jawline and paint the jaw back in and stuff like that. But again, that's more time consuming. So now what we do, now that we have her face kind of in place, we've erased the bits we don't want. Let's command or control click on the new face, just like that. Let's shut it off, and we'll go down to the background layer. I'm going to click the lock icon just to unlock it. I think I'll actually duplicate it just in case we mess it up or whatever. I'm just in the habit of duplicating layers when I'm getting ready to do destructive stuff uh, because then I've got a copy saved. And now that we have this uh, selection made, we're going to go select, modify, contract, and we're going to contract it maybe 15, maybe 20 pixels, something roundabout there. And with layer zero selected, our background layer, we're going to hit the delete key just to punch a hole in her face just like that. And then we'll turn the new face on on top of it. And it looks really bad. We're going to select both layers just like that. We're going to zoom out. Um, in fact, the new face looks a little dark. So what I may do before we even get started, I may manually brighten it up. So... To, to do brightness changes, a lot of times it's really helpful to slap a black and white layer on top of everything just because it gets rid of the color and you can really see like the highlights in the skin here versus the highlights in her skin there. There's a big difference. So let's um, select this layer. Again, we're going to perform a destructive edit going to adjustments and apply levels directly to the layer. And then I'm just going to open up the whites a little bit, maybe a little bit more. I'll fade away the blacks just a touch. Do I want to boost? Do I want to boost the overall whites a little bit? Maybe something like that. And again, we're, we're probably not going to get it 100%, but, you know, if we go from that to that, maybe we'll get a little bit of a better match, all right, something like that. We'll select our black and white adjustment layer and just get rid of it. That's just sort of a working layer. Let's select both these layers. We just shift click them, and we're going to go edit, auto blend layers, and here we're going to leave everything as we see it, panorama, seamless tones and colors, and content aware fill transparent areas, and hit OK. And you can see here... Well, Photoshop did a pretty good job. I mean, you can definitely tell there's a difference in skin here and skin up here. That would be something we, we want to definitely clean that up a bit there, fade that together or replace some skin texture. Like I mentioned here, we get that kind of hazy look. Her jawline's looking a little, yeah, a little weird in places. Um, and just real quick, let's say we wanted to clean up the jawline. Well, the way I would go about doing this is add a new layer, and I would probably just use the lasso tool. If you have a, a tablet, it's going to be a little bit easier. Um, but you could try doing something like this and just see how this looks. Maybe it would look terrible and you really don't like it. And then I'll go with like my clone stamp tool and I'm going to just begin sampling down here. I'm going to reduce the opacity of the clone stamp tool, maybe like to 50% or so. And then just begin painting over the stuff just to try to blend it together and establish a bit of a jawline for her. I want to get rid of any kind of weird stuff that pops up there. Uh, Commander control D to deselect. And again, you probably want to go, and that's a rather masculine looking jawline. You probably want to carve it back a little bit more. Um, and you can follow her original jawline to really see uh, kind of how that's, how that's working or should be working out. Something like so. And again, just using clone stamp down here. 
we can we can whoop we don't want to go over the green wire there we can just go in and begin cleaning up cleaning up cleaning up i said i wasn't really going to go over this we're going over it a little bit but not too terribly much commander control d to d select you can see it looks <laughs> let's be honest it looks pretty bad right there there we have that um and maybe to help blend that back together to take away the just the uber thin jaw i'll just reduce the opacity of that layer a little bit but you can see how it really looks like the sides of her jaw are dropping away way too much and we got that haziness over there so a couple things we can do to combat the haziness we could target like a dehaze filter you know camera raw wise and mask it right into that area we could do something where we just you know apply levels and say uh, just give me more contrast straight up something like that, maybe set it to like the luminosity blend mode, select the mask, hit command or control I, we would zoom in on the side of her face, grab our brush tool and just paint with black, I'll boost the flow back up, maybe reduce my opacity a bit and just paint in here, try to get rid of some of that haziness there in those darker areas, something like so, uh, just to help help uh, alleviate that a little bit. Um, and then even on the face, like the her original skin has more magenta in it, her new, her new skin has more green in it, so we could do something like apply levels, and we could say, look, go to the green channel. And we can say here, pull some of that green out of there. Now we just need to mask it to her new face. So you would select the mask, command or control I, grab your brush tool. And I'm doing this very roughly. I would, I would create much better selections if we were doing this for a real deal uh, project or something like that. Uh, and of course, then, like I said, these areas where they need to be blended together. Again, you would throw another new layer on here. So you're working non-destructively. You could say blend skin, something like that. Uh, and then it's really up to you how you want to work on it. You could go over it with uh, probably you'd want to go with a more hard edged healing brush so you don't destroy texture and reduce diffusion a little bit. Maybe knock diffusion down to like three. I'm trying to get three there, but it's not quite working out for me and try to go over that edge and just see how you can blend it together and see what looks right or what doesn't and keep playing with it. I might actually go with a soft edge brush here and just know, well, I'm going to have some damage along that edge in terms of I'm not going to have perfect texture preserved, stuff like that. Her skin's still a little magenta there on the old part of the forehead, but you can see how relatively quickly we go from this being the face to that being the face. Probably throw a little shadow in here along that side of her face. Uh, would make that a little bit better as well. Uh, but you can very, very quickly make huge face swaps. And if you have anything like the same lighting or the same color or the same environment, um, it's really going to work out even better. It's going to be really, really nice. I'm going to try to throw just a, uh, a little uh, curves layer on here. Let's go multiply. Let's try to add some shadow to that side of the face. Select the mask. Commander control I. I'm going to zoom in on it. And what I could do is just quickly reference... You can see where the shadow is coming down along that side of the face in the original image. So then I can come up into here in curves with my brush tool and say, look, let's just uh, let's give you a little shadow love in here. I'm going to say reduce the fill to like 30 percent as well and just build up the shadow in there. Maybe reduce the opacity of this layer a little bit. Pull a little bit more into there. So something like that, you know, not perfect. Uh, but what what matters the most here is the fact that we used this particular technique in fact we can just merge all layers to a new layer command shift option in the letter e i'm going to call this raw because we're going to apply a camera raw filter here to this and here in camera raw filter we probably hit it with a little dehaze maybe a little clarity something like so uh, and then you could go in and, and make some other adjustments warm up the whole image or cool down the whole image depending on what you thought it needed uh, and i'll reduce a little contrast in there while we're there and uh, I'll reduce those highlights a little bit, maybe boost the shadows just a touch and uh, pump a little more vibrance into it. Hit OK. So just a couple little changes like that makes a big difference. Um, and you can see the more and more you change and adjust, if you get the chin right, you can really get a nice, very realistic look uh, in a hurry. Because even doing this and explaining it, we've done it in about, what, 15 minutes here. So if you take your time and you, you find the right images or you're swapping, you know, it's the same shoot and you just need to swap two faces. Uh, this technique is, uh, it's a really, really fun one and it's super duper effective. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you go about swapping a face in Adobe Photoshop. Well, there you have it, ladies and gents. That is how you go about swapping a face. And again, it's up to you to spend as much time as you want cloning or healing and adjusting edges um, and just really making everything match and fit just perfectly. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting that little uh, subscribe button and make sure you tick on the notification bell. Uh, also, check out this video here on 25 Photoshop Tips and Tricks. You're really going to like it. It's getting, uh, it's getting received well by the good people here on YouTube. You can check it out by clicking that link right there in the middle of this video. Thanks for sticking around and watching this video all the way to the end. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.